Hey, Gary Hoover here with another book for review for you today. This is one of the coolest books I've read in a long time, and I think its ideas are really important. Before I get into the book, let me give you a little background. You know I'm a retail junkie. I've been into retailing since I was a little kid. My dream was to run a department store someday or start my own store, and I, I did. I started what was uh, probably the first chain of book superstores in the country, and Barnes & Noble bought it. Anyhow, and if you go to the uh, University of Texas at Austin McCombs Business School website, they got a video of me giving a history of American retailing. And, and I talk all about how it got to where it is and so on. I've given that presentation many times. Anyway, I have a big library downstairs right below where I'm standing. Uh, a big library, period, over 50,000 books, but a, a really intense library on the history of retailing. And I've been studying it for 47 years, at least. In any case, um, and two of the things that I believe that not everybody else believes um, that, that I think maybe are provocative, one, uh, I am a believer in Walmart. I believe it's a great company. I think it's done great things for our society. I actually think it's a good place to work. I know not everybody believes that, but that's a separate discussion. And I have that discussion in my classes with my students, people I meet all the time. But that is one of the things I believe that not everybody believes. Another thing, though, that may sound a little contradictory, well, when they rate who are the greatest business people of all time, there are a few lists like that floating around Almost always, the retailer who is the rank the highest is Sam Walton. Now, Sam's a hero of mine. His book, Made in America, is one of my favorite books. You should read it. Great book. But he's not the greatest retailer in U.S. history. And why I say that is as amazing as what he achieved, he really built on the shoulders of others. And I'm particularly focused on innovation. You know, like the invention of the supermarket was one of the most important inventions in American history and it changed the world and it's still having a global effect and yet nobody talks about that there's almost nothing written about it and when I went in and, and started working on my history of American retailing and, and America has really been the driving force in retail innovation over the last 50 years it's much more global now a lot going on in Europe and all over but a lot of the innovation came from the US uh, when I did that, I was thinking, well, who are the greatest retailers? And I really studied it and looked at it and came up with a pretty short list. And I at least tied for the number one spot. And probably number one in my book was a guy named John Augustine Hartford. And what this guy did is he really took over America's first major retail chain called the Great Atlantic and Pacific Tea Company, A&P Grocery Stores, from his father. He and his brother took it over, and then he took it to a whole other level. And the things he achieved were amazing. Well, anyway, there's like very little written on the A&P. The books were years ago. The company still exists. It went bankrupt last year. It's like companies. It rose, and it hit its peak, and it went into decline by the 1950s and 60s. Um, but a lot of people don't even remember it. It still exists in the Northeast, but it was much bigger than that. It was all over 30-some states at its peak. So I'm like, well, I wish people understood this, because everything Sam Walton did and everything Jim Senegal and, and Saul Price, the people behind the Costco and all that amazing merchants did, and in some ways everything Charles Lazarus did, another great pioneer, gave us Toys R Us, the superstore, led to Home Depot. That's awful lot of stuff comes from John Augustine Hartford and the A&P. So that's a message I've been preaching. I'd, I didn't even know about it. I saw him browsing Amazon, whatever. And I come across this book, The Great A&P and the Struggle for Small Business in America by Mark Levinson. And I'm like, well, I gotta get it right away. And I did. I gotta tell you, first of all, this guy Levinson, never met the guy, but he is a, an excellent researcher and historian. He's a guy that really cares about going back to old newspaper articles and having the footnotes. And I know for some of you, you don't like books with footnotes. It gets dry or boring. Man, if you want to know the truth of what really happened, or as close as we can assess. And this was a private company. It didn't go public during the era that it was run by these guys. So it can be a challenge to find information. And I have every book I could ever find written about the ANP. But this guy went deeper and found out things that I sure didn't know. The book talks about how these guys built the biggest retail chain in the world, one of the first billion dollar companies in the world, 
in the 1920s it had a billion in revenue. They, up, they were up to like 15, 16,000 stores at their peak. Just amazing with no Federal Express and no you know, UPS or, or um, Excel or Word or uh, Internet. It's amazing what they did. He tells a compelling story, but the other part of it, and that's why in the title is And the Struggle for Small Business in America, is a chain store freaked people out. It, not to customers, it was wonderful to the customers. It created jobs, but it, it gave low prices and it found more efficient ways to do things. It lowered the cost of eating in America, especially important for lower income people. Who did it hurt? Well, it wasn't real pleasant on independent grocery stores and it wasn't real pleasant on grocery wholesalers that serve those independents. Now they weren't a big share of the American people, but it was kind of like an icon. So there was a huge movement in the 20s and 30s and right up to a big antitrust case around 1950 to try to stop AMP or even kill it and anybody like it. I think luckily for all of us, Consumers won. Now, AMP didn't win. They were actually found guilty. But if you study it, or one other great book I've got by a guy named Edelman that's referred to in this book that really stay in the details, the whole government case was like nonsense and made no sense. It was just people helping their buddies. It was politics. And as Levinson points out, it's the same thing going on today in a lot of the fights against Walmart. And Levinson's talked about this, wrote a piece for the Washington Post about the importance of the chain store in America. My thing is, hardly anybody sees that. Hardly anybody understands it, really deeply understands that. And the role it's played in our society, because it has a lot of other implications, whether you're talking about McDonald's or other things. Like I said in another uh, video blog here, uh, every technology, chain store, fast food chain, chain motels, it's got positives and negatives but this has been a powerful thing and to have some writer today 40 50 years after the company's decline really take it seriously and write about it is so wonderful and if you really want to understand American retailing and you really want to understand some of these political battles between the big guys and the little guys and don't get me wrong I love them all and I do believe that independent retailers can always compete effectively with these big guys, but it takes hard work, it takes imagination, it takes innovation, and more than anything, it takes obsession with your customers. And a lot of independent stores don't have what it takes. Just my blunt opinion. But I've got friends here in Austin that run wonderful independent stores, Precision Camera, Bicycle Sports Shop, uh, and go on and on. I know others, I won't bother mentioning that. I'd rather go to the chain. The independent doesn't care about their merchandise and care about their, their customers like they should. Any case, this is just a great book if you really want to understand what's going on. And the last thing I'd say about it that Levinson doesn't really get into, we need to understand innovation in the services. Our economy globally today is 71% services. The total that's in manufacturing and industry and mining and oil and gas and everything is going down and down and down. That's just a long-term trend. It's a great, good thing. We're, we're figuring out how to manufacture things. We're taking less people. That's a long-term. That's not just like 20 years of move to China or whatever. This is like over 50, 100 years. We are a service economy. And so to the extent we under, want to understand innovation, how to do cool stuff, yeah, we can learn a lot from Henry Ford and those guys and Andrew Carnegie and whatever. We need to study retailers. We need to study entertainment industry people. We need to understand restaurateurs and hoteliers. We need to understand uh, journalists and media people and the people who built the broadcasting industry. We need to understand the people who built the airline industry. We need to understand how do you innovate in the services. And I just find almost no attention being paid to that. And this book would be a great place to start. So, the great A&P, Mark Levinson. Thank you, Mark. I hope you all get this book. This is Gary Hoover. I'll see you later.